Do you have a tough time making decisions? If you clicked on this video, I'm guessing yes, and I'm also guessing that you desperately wish you just knew what to do when you're faced with these big life decisions. Maybe you find yourself weighing the pros and the cons, asking everyone you come across for their advice and opinions, feeling torn between your head and your heart, and ultimately taking forever to actually decide, sometimes to the point of someone else having to just make that decision for you. Sound familiar? I've been there, and while there are a number of factors that go into making a a good decision. One of those factors is the information that you have available to you in that point in time. And I don't just mean the kind of information you can Google or research because I think we've all <laughs> had the experience of going deep down a research rabbit hole and yet still feeling unprepared to make a decision. A little bit of an analysis paralysis, if you will. When I say information, I really mean the awareness and perspective that we bring to that particular decision. To improve our decision-making skills, we need to go way past past the pros and cons. So today I wanted to share one specific tool that really helps me broaden my perspective and awareness in decision making and helps me to consider things that I may not have considered before. This tool is a little something called the plus minus matrix. That's not the official name for it or anything. That's just the name I made up for it. I don't think there is an official name for this, but I call it this because I like to visually think of it as this matrix where we have four quadrants and categories along the top and along the side. And when we combine these two sides of the matrix, we end up with four specific questions to ask when we're making decisions. Along the top, we have if you do it, where one column represents if you do X thing, and where the second column represents if you don't do X thing. And along the side, we have what will happen, where one row represents what will happen, and then the other row represents what will not happen. So we get to phrase each piece of the question as either affirmative or negative. Ultimately, the four questions that we end up with are this. One, what will happen if you do this? Two, what will happen if you don't do this? Three, what won't happen if you do this? Four, what won't happen if you don't do this? Hopefully I didn't lose you there. I know we can take a second or two to get it wrap your brain around it. But what I love about these questions is that they really ask us to consider new perspectives. While in most decisions, I imagine you are probably thinking about what will happen in scenario A versus scenario B, but it is much less common for us to look for what is missing, for what won't happen in each scenario. When we do this kind of reading between the lines or looking for the gaps, we gather new awareness and information that when you look at just what's there, you may not see at first. So let's go through a little example to better understand how we can apply this to a real life scenario. Let's take the example of, I don't know, starting a YouTube channel. Something that I had to make a decision on just a little under a year ago. Obviously, if you're watching this video, you know what the result was, but let's go through the questions one by one. One, what will happen if you do this? Well, nothing is guaranteed. I do know that if I put my heart and soul into starting YouTube, that at the very least, I will improve my on-camera confidence and speaking abilities. I'll probably learn quite a bit about filming and editing, as well as just overall improving video quality and creating engaging content. I'd also have an opportunity to share on topics that are interesting to me. I'd have a new and exciting creative outlet to experiment with. And like I said, there's no guarantee as there isn't with many life decisions, which is what makes them so hard. But in this particular situation, there is the possibility of getting monetized, making an income off of YouTube, and even building a whole brand and business that could possibly change the trajectory of my life. Now question two, what will happen if I don't do this? Well, if I wanna make money with my creativity, I'm going to have to find and experiment with other avenues of being able to do so. If creating content is a goal and an interest of mine, then I'd have to find another platform to focus on. And all of those benefits that we mentioned for the first question, like creative expression and building confidence, etc., all of those benefits, if I do still want to achieve them, would have to be found from some other source. Now, that being said, I would also have more time and energy to put into other endeavors if I didn't start a YouTube channel. I think that's something important to consider in many different decisions. If you're choosing whether or not you want to do something, you also need to consider what you could be doing with that time and energy if you didn't do that thing and kind of weigh those against each other. And another thing that always kind of sneaks its way into my answer for this particular question is always wondering what if. 
when I ask what will happen if I don't do this, then I'm often, especially if it's something I'm really interested in, I'll often be met with wondering what if I did do that? What if I put myself out there? What if I just tried? And how might my life be different? And that what if question. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me. For me, it's like a huge fear to get to the end of my life and wonder what if. So that's always a big consideration for me. Question three is what won't happen if you do this? So in the case of starting a YouTube channel, I probably won't really be able to start any other large major project for the foreseeable future, at least for maybe a year or two, because a lot of my time and energy would need to go to YouTube specifically to grow. But this is kind of the flip side of what we were saying before. What won't happen if I do do this is that I won't have any regrets, any what ifs, any niggling wonders in the back of my head wondering where I might be if I had tried. Even if I quote unquote fail or just decide it's not for me, at least I'll know. And finally question number four, what won't happen if I don't do this? Well if I don't start a YouTube channel there's zero chance of me making money off of YouTube so that definitely won't happen. Again there's no guarantee but it is possible that maybe I won't have as strong or powerful of a brand if I don't create this like more long form type of content. And also if I didn't start a YouTube channel, I don't know if I would really push or motivate myself too much to explore the interests I have in photography, videography, editing, and improving those skills just on my own for fun. So it is an interest of mine that would probably just fall to the wayside as it wouldn't really be top priority. So you can see based on the answers to these four questions that I did obviously ultimately decide to start my YouTube channel. The answers for these questions are are of course going to vary from person to person and between situations depending on what decision it is you're trying to make. That's exactly what makes them so adaptable and helpful in whatever situation it is. Try it out right now and let me know how it goes in the comments because I would be so curious to hear even if you just did a quick mental checklist of these questions what new found information might come up from that. If you found the strategy helpful please give this video a thumbs up because I am a growing channel and it is so appreciated as it helps my video reach more people. I would also recommend checking out one of my other videos about making authentic decisions. I'll link that above here somewhere for you. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!